If you want to improve your drawing skills, then do this challenge with me. Just grab some paper and a pencil and let's draw together. If you don't know what portrait roulette is, it's basically a challenge where I let a randomizer choose what kind of face I'm going to draw today. So let's get straight into it. Starting with the head shape, we need to draw a short upside down triangle, a pointed hairline, and a square jaw, which as a combination basically just gives us a triangular face shape. So let's start with the basic shapes and guidelines to establish our head shape, a circle, and an upside down triangle. But keeping in mind that it's not an equilateral triangle since the height is shorter than the base. I also like to draw this upside down triangle a little bit shorter than the diameter of the circle. But as this portrait roulette challenge is meant to show us, there's really no right or wrong way to draw any of the shapes because each small change leads to a different face. In fact, that should be the motto for this challenge. Each small change leads to a different face. Now let's add our guidelines for the facial proportions by dividing the face vertically in half and dividing it into six horizontal sections. And these horizontal lines represent a guide for each facial feature. And note, I said guide. So these guidelines are really just here as loose indications of where you should put a facial feature, such as the eyes, nose, mouth. And speaking of eyes, our randomizer tells us that we have to draw almond-shaped eyes, large and wide set. For the eyelids, we need to draw hooded and downturned eyelids. For the eyes, I start off by dividing line four into five equal sections. Each section is the length of an eye, which tells us that in an ideal face, the distance between each eye is another eye. But because we're here to prove that guidelines are just guides, we're going to draw the eyes further apart to create wide set eyes. We're also going to lift the outer point of the eyes upwards to create almond shaped eyes. And I'm going to draw the eyes on line four because I'm drawing large eyes. In my previous video, I drew the eyes on top of line four. And honestly, you can also draw them below line four and that will give you a different looking face because like I said, each small change leads to a different face. For the eyelids, hooded means the arch representing the eyelids is really close to the top of the eyes. Sometimes it's almost touching, but because they're downturned, we're just going to tilt that where only the outer point of the arch is really close to the eyes or basically like touching the eyes. Now for the eyebrows, we have to draw thin straight and far eyebrows. Similar to the guideline for eyes, the guideline for eyebrows is also a loose indication of where to place the eyebrows. Far basically is just a term that I've created for the portrait roulette, but it means that I'm going to draw below line three and close would mean that it's between line three and four, meaning it's closer to the eyes. And you can even place the eyebrows above line three, but it's kind of good to note how big a change you can make before things start to look off. Now, drawing the eyebrows above line three can actually indicate expression, for example, a shocked face. But in this particular case, I'm just going for a neutral facial expression. So that may be for another video. I also tend to draw the eyebrows longer than the width of an eye. For me, that's the ideal length, but of course you can also change that and draw it shorter. For the nose, we have to draw a short nose with a round ball, open and upturned nostrils, and a narrow base. And keep in mind that these are only five of the multiple variations for the nose and also for the rest of the facial features. I personally like to draw the nose with a circle first. And for this one, because it's short, I'm drawing it on top of line five. Once again, you can draw it on line five or below line five, depending on the length of the nose or whether the ball of the nose sits higher or lower than the nostrils. It's really up to you. A narrow base means we draw the nostrils closer together, making the width of the nose a little bit smaller than the width of an eye. 
For the mouth, we have to draw wide, thin lips with the lower lip being more prominent. Now, wide means the width of the mouth is wider than the width of an eye. I often draw the mouth on top of line six, especially for thinner lips. Once again, use the guideline as a loose indication of where to place the mouth. The placement of the mouth can also vary based on facial expressions. But in this challenge, I'm going to draw a closed mouth to keep it nice and simple. But once again, each small change leads to a different face. And with every small change we've created to the shapes of the facial features have given us a result of a different looking face compared to the one that I drew in my previous video and the one before that. And hopefully it'll be the same for you. Now let's add my personal touches, which are the circles for the chin, ovals for the cheeks, and the forehead. And for the jaw, which if we go back to our randomizer, it's a square jaw and we also have a pointed hairline. So I start by drawing a diagonal line connecting the intersection of the circle and line three down to the tip of the upside down triangle. So this creates the sides of the face. And just like what I mentioned before, the width of the upside down triangle is ultimately up to you. A wider triangle means a wider jaw shape. I only drew it in this width because it's my ideal width for a jaw. It's not too wide, it's not too narrow. I then draw the hairline from the intersection of the new diagonal lines that we just drew and line four. And because it's a pointed hairline, I am just drawing two curves that meet in the middle of the head into a point. Now, a pointed hairline really just means that the top of the hairline is much narrower than the base of the hairline. It doesn't necessarily need to come to a point realistically. And in fact, it could be more of an indication of hairstyle rather than a true hairline, especially when hair is parted in the middle as a hairstyle. I then add the ears on line four and five, and I use the diameter of the circle as an indication of the width of the ears. If I go beyond this guideline, it's totally fine. And if I don't even let the ears touch the guideline, it's also totally fine. Once again, each small change leads to a different face. I've left this part off of the portrait roulette to give us a little bit of freedom to do what we want because a lot of it is already kind of up to a randomizer. And speaking of freedom, let's draw some hair, which has to be long curly hair with two gather points. This means that the hairstyle I choose needs to have two gather points, such as pigtails. Gather points can be represented as any hair accessory that creates gathers in the hair. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I recommend that you watch my tutorial on how to draw hair. But this is where the freedom comes in. It's up to you. You can interpret this as two hair clips or hair tucked behind both ears, two low ponytails, two buns, two pigtails. Really, it's up to you. I've chosen two ponytails, and for that, I start drawing the hair with a partition line in the center to really show off that pointed hairline. And to add volume to the hair, I also extend that partition line above the circle, which is the top of the head. And from here, I start mapping out the general shape of the hairstyle with the two low ponytails. But as I do that, I'm drawing really wavy lines to represent curls. Also drawing my gathering points for the ponytails just under the ears. I then draw more squiggly curves to represent the clumps of curls. And now we're going to shade. This is probably the most challenging part for me along with hair because it's something I lack practice in. But hey, what is this challenge if not an opportunity for me to practice those two things alongside practicing how to draw faces. So 
With our randomizer, our light source is located on the right hand side, in the middle, and behind the subject. So this type of lighting is very interesting and challenging because it puts the majority of the face in darkness, which means that technically we won't see as much detail. So I'm going to start off by mapping out where my light areas are going to be, which will mostly be on the right side of the face, the right side of the nose bridge, and a small section above the mouth. There will also be a sliver on the right side of the neck, but because of the hair, it will now be in shadow. For this part, we are going to start shading the face. And if you're following along with this video, hopefully everything has made sense so far. If some things are confusing, definitely feel free to ask me any questions. You can message me on my social media, which will be linked in the description box, or you can simply type out your question in the comment section below. But for this section, I'm just going to fill in some music along with the sounds of the pencil screen scratches on the paper and I will be back shortly. When filming this challenge, I decided to keep the shading very light because I wanted to preserve the facial features since that is the main purpose of the portrait roulette. But I actually went back to shade the drawing in the drastic backlighting to really show how this light could work on the face that we drew. So I darkened most of the hair to get rid of the details. I also darkened the eyes, especially the left eye since it was in shadow. And I tried to give some depth to the shading by making some parts just slightly darker than others. For example, the inner corner of the eyes, under the nose and under the mouth, and also just under the jaw. That way it's not too flat or just a blob of gray. But if you really wanna know more in terms of shading, then I recommend that you also watch my video tutorial on how to shade. But I definitely love to practice backlighting with other mediums like watercolors or markers. Perhaps in the future, that might have to be a different video because this one is now complete. We have drawn our face and I hope you have too. And if you wanna see more portraits I've drawn using this randomizer, you can just go to my Instagram, which is linked in the description box, or you can watch it right here. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in my next one.